Welcome to Omaha Historic Building Research, brought to you by Restoration Exchange Omaha. My name is Patrick Thompson, and I'm an architectural historian employed by REO, for which I have written successful National Register and local landmark nominations. I will guide you through a few websites that we hope will aid in your research. While some may be familiar, other sources may be quite new. We will begin by obtaining some basic information about a property, looking up original land patent records, and later at subdivision plats. We will then turn to sources such as the Omaha World Herald and Omaha Daily Bee digital archives. Near the conclusion of the presentation, we will look at some new digital and more traditional sources of information. During your research, you may discover a new source of information not covered here. If you do, please let us know. Other times, you may become frustrated at the pace of the research or the information learned. We have all surely discovered that when it comes to research in historic primary sources, patience is often the key to success. If you hit a brick wall in your research, feel free to put it aside for a few days and try again later, or even look for similar or slightly different information in another source. The best place to start is the Douglas County Assessor's website dcassessor.org backslash home. From this website, we can gather basic information such as the building's address, approximate year of construction, legal description of the property, and other descriptive information. From the main page, click on Valuation Lookup and Mapping, read the disclaimer, and click on I agree. On the next page, while you can look up properties based on things like parcel numbers, the owner's name, and so on, the easiest way is probably to enter the building number and the street name without including the road type, such as street, drive, avenue, etc. For example, I will use 2214 Florence, and this brings up the parcel for the Memon Apartments located at that address. For numbered streets, it would be sufficient to use the building number and the street name as a number. For example, 470125 brings up the parcel for El Museo Latino, the former Polish home in South Omaha. Again, going back to the Memon Apartments example at 2214 Florence, you see the parcel indicated by the orange dot. If you click on the dot, the parcel is now outlined in red and a small window appears. The small window contains basic information such as the owner, the owner's address, the address of the building or parcel, and the subdivision name. You can uh, make note of the subdivision name, or it's sometimes called addition name, and we will look into that uh, in future research. In the lower left corner, click on the word report, and another window will appear. From this report, you can find information that will be useful in a general history or for completing a National Register form, for example, such as the legal description description of the property, which is found here, the total acreage located here, and the year that it was built located here. Please note that the year built may be correct or simply approximate. Later research will hopefully corroborate this date or determine a better one. This report also contains other information that may be useful later for writing the description of the building. In this case, that it has masonry brick walls, that its roof is a built-up rock flat roof system, and that as an apartment building, it contains 12 units. When you have obtained all of the information that you think is useful or necessary, you can then close out of this window. 
If your building or property is located on one of the city's original city lots for Omaha or South Omaha, there will be no subdivision or addition to search for, and the next step can be skipped. The legal description of your parcel would indicate something like Lot 8, Block 102, City Lots. In this case, your only option is to access early city maps, such as this one. When the map comes up, and we can enlarge it, and we see the individual blocks are numbered. Here is block 102. The individual lots are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Lot 8 on block 102 is located on the northwest corner of Douglas and 11th Street, which is the present day location of the Alvine building. Next, we will look at subdivision plats, which can be found at the Douglas County Engineers website, dcengineer.org. Please note that this website can be temperamental. Moving from page to page may take a few moments or it may freeze up entirely. You may have to close out and come back to the website several times before you are able to get the plat images that you're seeking. For this exercise and for that reason, I'm going to move from tab to tab with the appropriate pages already open instead of clicking the necessary links. To find your subdivision plat, click on Land Survey Records and then on Plat Search. On the next page, in the box entitled Subdivision Name, enter the name of the subdivision that you're researching, and then click Return. What will come up is a list of uh, subdivision plats that include all of the uh, words that were in the subdivision name that you entered, in this case Franklin Square. You see these replats came up, and since we know that the original plat was filed back in 1888, we see that the one on top is the one that we are seeking. You can click on the image icon here, and the first image that should come up is the original plat submitted by a property owner or his surveyor to the county clerk. As you can see, it shows the property subdivision into individual lots. And keep in mind that larger subdivision plats may contain two or more blocks. Uh, these plats usually contain written statements by the county clerk, the surveyors, and or by the owner. In this case, we can see that Franklin Square was platted by Alvin Saunders in 1888. If you click on the blue arrow above, you'll see the second page, which in this case is a, uh, a cleaned up, somewhat easier to read version of the same plat, which may have been drawn to, to be used as the county's official copy of the new plat. From this version, we see that Saunders Franklin Square property was located in the southeast quarter of the southwest quarter of Section 10, Township 15, Range 13 East. You can make note of this information for later research, and it can be verified using EarthPoint's Township and Range tools for Google Earth. If you click on the blue arrow in the left-hand column, you can download the plat images for easy reference and or to include in your final reports or nominations if you wish. For purposes of writing a general property history, it may be sufficient to go back to when the subdivision was platted, in this case 1888. If you go back earlier to when the land outside the original city was patented, which will be discussed next, it would be true enough to cover the period between the patent and the subdivision by writing simply that the property was subject to real estate speculation from the time it was patented 
until it was platted as an addition to the City of Omaha. A review of individual owners of the property after the subdivision would require an in-person visit to the Douglas County Recorder's Office. One may also be able to trace a general history through real estate transfers in newspaper archives, but this information is not always easily found. Once you have retrieved all of the necessary information, you can then close out of this page. If you're unfamiliar with the public land survey system, it is probably worthwhile to learn a little about it before beginning the next exercise. See this site from the Jacksonville State University's Geography Department for a simple one-page primer on the system that you can bookmark and reference for future research. On this tab, I have open an original survey map of Township 15 North, Range 13 East from 1857 that includes much of present-day Omaha. As you can see, the township is basically a large square that is about 36 miles square made up of 36 smaller subdivisions known as sections. As you saw on the previous generic example, a township or a section can be subdivided into halves, quarter sections, or quarter sections of quarter sections, and so on. The permutations can be somewhat endless and confusing, but once you've got a basic understanding of the system, it can be intuitive. In this example, if we click here and here to enlarge, we see section 22, and we see the northwest quarter, northeast quarter, southeast quarter, and the southwest quarter. And in this particular example, we see that the capital, or what was uh, supposed to be the capital for the new city of Omaha, is located in the northwest quarter of section 22. Once one knows the section, township, and range information, one can learn who originally patented or claim the land from the general land office records available at glorecords.blm.gov. These claims usually took place around the time of the city's founding, beginning in the mid-1850s and continued through the early 1860s. On the main page, click on Land Patents, and on the next page, in the drop-down boxes, we will select Nebraska and Douglas County. And in the land description section, we will enter the township and range information we learned earlier. Range or township 15 north, range 13 east, section in. Then click on Search Patents. What will come up is a list of data, but in particular we're going to look under the aliquots column here. We're basically searching for the smallest subdivision of the section that includes the property we're looking at. In this case, we're seeking the southwest quarter of the southeast quarter of Section 10 to find Franklin Square and the Memon property. Under this aliquots column, review the various patents while ensuring the given entry includes the correct section, in this case Section 10, as patentees were sometimes granted land in an adjacent or completely separate section on the same patent. Our review indicates that a patent was filed on August 15, 1860, that includes the west half of the southeast quarter of Section 10 meaning that it included the northwest and southwest quarters of the southeast quarter. The patents list the names of George Smith, Samuel Niles, and Joseph Robards. If you click on the image icon, you can learn more details about the patent. In this case, that the 160 acres was originally patented by Joseph Robards, a private in Captain Allen's company of the Kentucky Militia during Wayne's War. Robards, a 
according to this section, then assigned or sold his claim to Niles, who in turn assigned it to Smith. Thus, the land that will later make up the Franklin Square addition was first owned by George Smith beginning in 1860. One may return to the 1857 survey map seen earlier by clicking on the related docu documents tab here and then on the next page the surveys link here and then either on original survey or plat image. You may have to click on the basic viewer button at the bottom and the image comes right up. We are looking for section 10 which is located here and we see the south east quarter here and that southwest quarter is located approximately here. Again both of these images the uh, original patent and the survey map can be downloaded and saved or you can just make note of whatever information you would like and then you can close out of this window. Newspaper archives can be a great way to corroborate construction dates or real estate transfers. They can also provide information about original or early property owners or provide information about architects who design buildings for certain clients. We have two great digital resources that are searchable. The Omaha World Herald archives are available through the Omaha Public Library's website and an archive of the Omaha Daily Bee from December 1872 through April 1916 is available at nebnewspapers.unl.edu. Starting with the Omaha Daily Bee, one can either enter a general search term in the search box here or perform a more advanced search by clicking this button which I've already done. As you can see, I've chosen to search the Omaha Daily Bee for a range of dates in September 1889 using the phrase J. Jensen. And what comes up are two entries. The first on September 10th and as you can see on this page by the small red dots here. What I believe is being picked up are, are instances of the individual letter J, but I see that there's one here that's a little bit larger, which could be either Jensen's last name or the phrase J. Jensen. If you click on that and it comes up, you see that it actually is a real estate transfer from Albert Alvin Saunders and wife to J. Jensen lot 2 and part of lot 3 Franklin Square for $6,300. As you can see this says lot 20 but I'm, I'm certain that that's a typo. If you scroll down you see that this section also contains building permits. For example if you go back and click on September 15th you again see two large returns here and if you click on them, the one at the top corroborates the earlier information, the real estate transfer. And if you scroll down, we have a building permit. J. Jensen will build a two-story brick tenement on 17th near Spruce to cost $12,000. Now this says 17th but it should say 19th. So again, I think we have another typo. And uh, when we go to the Omaha World Herald archives, I'll show you why I believe so. At the Omaha World Herald archives, I'm doing a similar search for Jensen, a range of dates in September 1889. I've already clicked search and two returns come up. Um, the first one, September 10th, basically provides um, corroboration of the same information uh, regarding the uh, Saunders 
and Jensen land transaction here. Lot 2, part of Lot 3, Franklin Square, $6,300. And again, you see building permits is located directly below that. Going back to our returns, click on September 15th. And here we see, again, waiting for it to come up, that there's a return here, but this one is for Hans Jensen. However, scrolling down to the building permits, we see here, not picked up in the search for whatever reason, but um, we, we, we can see it here anyway, Jens Jensen, two-story brick flat, 19th Street, near Spruce, $12,000. Since 19th Street at this time is today's Florence Boulevard and Spruce is the street immediately north of the Memon Apartments, I believe this is the building permit uh, for Jens Jensen to build the Memon Apartments at that location. It uh, should be noted that uh, a, a continued search through newspaper archives can teach you things about either architects or original property owners that you may not have have uh, discovered otherwise. For example, it is through the research in the newspaper archives that I learned that Jensen lost the Mimmon Apartments due to foreclosure and the building was offered for sale at public auction to settle his debts. It's also worth noting that if you fail to turn up anything the first time, try a different search use just a surname or a first and middle initial instead of a first and surname. Also keep in mind that streets have changed over the city's history. North 19th Street in the 1880s is today's Florence Boulevard. Building numbers have also shifted too. Addresses and street names can be checked via a variety of sources such as city directories at the library and Sanborn and other maps available via the library and other online sources. There are some new, lesser known online and digital sources that can aid in your research. Google Books at books.google.com and the Hattie Trust available at hattietrust.org are large collections of digital books, journals, and periodicals that are fully searchable online. The Nebraska State Historical Society has a website devoted to many of Nebraska's more prominent architects found at e-nebraskahistory.org. The Durham Museum at durhammuseum.org and the Omaha World Herald at omaha.com backslash multimedia both have extensive digital photograph collections available online. On the Google Books main page, you can enter your search terms here in the search box. For example, if we enter Joel in Cornish, Omaha, the builder of the Cornish mansion, we get several returns. And if we click on any of these local history books, We get um, an extensive biography of Joel in Cornish. The site also contains some rather obscure construction and architecture related sources. For example, we know that Norman E. Tro erected his laundry building on Cass Street in 1911. So if we enter Tro Laundry, 1911, Omaha. We get a return for a periodical called The Western Contractor. And if we click on that, we see here that there's a listing for Omaha. And right here, we have a listing for a laundry building for the Tro Criterion Laundry at 1518 Cass Street is projected and NE Tro has taken out a permit for 
for about $7,000. It will have two stories and a basement, enameled brick. This indicates that there is a second entry that we can look at, and if we click on it, we again get an, uh, a listing for Omaha. We look down, and this is where a building permit was issued to Norman E. Tro for his laundry building. Now, the Western contractor and journals like it were probably uh, oriented towards contractors and uh, other tradesmen throughout the Midwest that allowed them to learn what projects were going on in various cities so that they could bid on the construction or the plumbing or the electrical, for example. If you click on the search box over here by the Go button and type in a more general search, you'll bring up all the instances of the word Omaha, showing all the various projects that were projected to be constructed in this part of 1911. Now, if you go back to the main page here and click on More Additions, you'll see that there are more additions, but Google Books will it not, on its own, have a large collection of journals like this but the next site that we'll look at should have a larger collection of digitized journals such as the Western Contractor and others. The Hattie Trust is a large digital repository of books and journals. It can be accessed at hattietrust.org. Here, one can look up more complete collections of journals like Western Contractor, American Contractor, Western Architect, Improvement Bulletin, or Inland Architect, or any others you might discover as you look through the collection. For example, if you enter Improvement Bulletin in the search box, you get a list of returns, and if you click on any of these links, Catalog Record, you can see the full range of editions and volumes of that particular journal that are available at the Hattie Trust website. Now, having a more precise idea of your building's construction date may come in handy at this point. For example, in Volume 6 of Inland Architect and News Record, dated from August 1885 through January 1886, we discovered drawings by Omaha architect Sidney Smith of the Mercer Mansion, including drawings of the interior hallway. If previous research has indicated that your building was constructed at a certain date, you can look up some of the journals named earlier and search inside them. You can either enter Omaha for a more general search or the surname of an owner or architect, if known, for something more specific. In this example, I searched the Improvement Bulletin for January 1899 using the search terms Schlitz Omaha and discovered a large collection of buildings designed by J.P. Guth, architect, for the Pabst Brewing Company, including a two-story store and flats on the corner of 28th and Q in South Omaha, cottages connected to the same, more stores, 25th and Q, as well as information on other architects in the city. John Kewitt, F. A. Henninger, and John McDonald. The Durham Museum's photo collection can be a valuable resource. On the main page, durhammuseum.org, hover over Exhibits and Collections, scroll down and click on Photo Archive. On the next page, you can read about the archive, scroll down and click on the Access button. 
on the next page you can enter your contact information or scroll down and check the guest box read the terms and conditions and then check I agree and then click on view the collection on the next page you can enter your search terms 1501 Howard for example will bring up images of the Scott Tent and Awning Company located at 1501 Howard that were taken in 1941. The Durham Museum requests permission for the use of their images, but there is no charge for nonprofits nor for including images in National Register nominations. Stop. Three, two, one. The Durham Museum's photo collection can be a valuable resource. On the main page, durhammuseum.org, hover over Exhibits and Collections, scroll down and click on Photo Archive. On the next page, you can read about the archive, scroll down and click on the Access button. On the next page, you can enter your contact information or scroll down and check the guest box read the terms and conditions, and then check I agree, and then click on view the collection. On the next page, you can enter your search terms. 1501 Howard, for example, will bring up images of the Scott Tent and Awning Company located at 1501 Howard that were taken in 1941. The Durham Museum requests permission for the use of their images, but there is no charge for nonprofits nor for including images in National Register nominations. If you discover or know the name of your building's architect, you can go to the Nebraska State Historical Society's website, Historic Nebraska People, Places, and Landscapes at e nebraskahistory.org. You can scroll down and click on Placemakers of Nebraska, the Architects. And on this page, in the upper right-hand corner, enter the surname of the architect you're researching. This will bring up several returns, perhaps. In this case, uh, it includes architectural firms that Edward J. Sessinghouse was associated with. If you click on the main entry for him, You'll see a short biography, uh, a photograph of one or more of his more iconic buildings, educational and professional associations, including other architects he may have worked with, and then a chronological listing of buildings uh, that he either designed or that have been attributed to him. These include notes and references. Now as you scan through the chronological listing to corroborate uh, the information about your architect having designed your building and you discover that the entry is not there, um, you can submit the information along with a reference say a newspaper name, article title, date, and page number, for example, to the staff of the Nebraska State Historical Society, and they will update the record. There are, of course, local digital and non-digital collections that may aid in your research, such as the Omaha Public Library, the Douglas County Historical Society, the Nebraska State Historical Society, and the Landmarks Heritage Preservation Commission. The main library downtown, of course, has a non-digital local history section that includes a collection of city directories, local histories, a large collection of historic Omaha newspapers on microfilm, and even a newspaper clipping file. One may also access some online content, such as Ancestry.com, for research on previous owners or architects, for example. The library's website provides access to the Omaha World Herald archives and also has a digital local history section that includes maps, atlases, and other resources. 
the Douglas County Historical Society, whose website is douglascohistory.org, is housed at the Fort Omaha campus of Metropolitan Community College. It, too, has a large collection of photographs, maps, books, and newspapers, both bound and on microfilm, but far less of its collection is available online, so in-person visits may be in order. Keep in mind, the DCHS is a nonprofit and has a small staff available to answer questions via email or telephone. The library may be open only certain days of the week or for short periods of time. As with other aspects of our research, your patience is appreciated and will hopefully be rewarded. The Nebraska State Historical Society, whose website is nebraskahistory.org, may have additional information on your building or property if it was part of a previous architectural survey of a street or neighborhood, or if the property's owner or builder or architect was particularly prominent. The NSHS also has a collection of photographs and other archival material that could prove helpful in your research. The Landmark Heritage Preservation Commission, whose website is landmark.cityofomaha.org, has information that you might find useful in your research. For example, it has general information about the city's preservation program and about the National Register and local landmark program. The Surveys tab has copies of all the reconnaissance surveys conducted in the city to date. The Maps tab has both a GIS map that shows the city's historic districts, local landmarks, and National Register properties but also provides access to digital copies of these nomination forms, but also has links to historic city maps. The Collections tab includes digital access to the Meyer Photograph Collection taken by city planning employee Lynn Meyer from the 1970s to the 1990s, a collection of historic postcard images, and scanned images of some historic blueprints. You can contact the Landmarks Commission staff to determine if your building's original or historic blueprints have been scanned. It should be noted that not all buildings have scanned blueprints available. Thank you for watching our presentation. We hope that some of these tips and resources can help you discover new information about your historic building or property. Your property may not be available in all of the resources mentioned in this presentation, but it is not intended to be exhaustive. You will likely go off down new and interesting trails in your research, and you might discover a great new resource for others. We here at Restoration Exchange Omaha wish you the best of luck in your search.